We got this AIO months ago, and I mean months. I myself decided to postpone the review for that long, because at the time we were still doing things at a fixed 135 watts workload. Whereas I already knew that we will be doing, you know, much higher just in a few months from there. The reason I did that was, and I quote, you will be surprised on its performance surprise me. And because I am tired of waiting, let's just get to the benchmark of this geometric future Eskimo Junior Neon 36 before we do anything else. Using this poor little thing, we created three scenarios. A low workload at 120 watts, a mid to high workload at 250 watts, and a god tier with good log of cooling this down at 320 watts. To get our numbers, we switch between the different modes in BIOS with pretty much every imaginable setting locked down. Then we hit the CPU and wait for about 15 minutes until the cooler reached what it can do over a permanent time span. This is especially important on AIOs because it takes some time before the water can really heat up. And then we gradually lower the fan speed in 10% steps while the pump is always fixed at 100% and we note down the CPU package temperature averaged over 2 minutes and we deduct the air temperature in front of the fan to get the temperature above ambient at any given fan setting. For the noise, we position the cooler on a table and the dB meter at exactly 1 meter distance on its own tripod. Then again, pump at 100% and fan at variable speeds and we measure the dBs at any given fan speed. Let's start with the low workload. At a measly 120 watts going through the socket, the Eskimo Junior 36 managed to keep the 3900K at 32.5 degrees C above ambient. This positions it in a quite weird spot, in front of the Arctic Lucan Freezer 360, but behind the Pulip 2FX280. On the noise to performance graph, we will see something even weirder. Yeah. With all high performance and or 360mm coolers or even bigger, the CPU temperature doesn't really give a damn about the fan speed. You can see that because of this huge drop in noise with a relatively small performance hit. All of them just drop like stones. All of them are just heading towards noise floor and the CPU doesn't even notice it. The Eskimo just does so a bit harder than most other contestants. Obviously, 120 watts total package power just ain't enough to showcase how these massive coolers can perform. So let's bump up the heat to 250 watts. At more than double the work, the Eskimo Junior keeps the chip at 61 degrees C above ambient. This now completely changed position, outperforming the Pure Loop 2FX, Liquid Freezer 280 and 360, as well as every air cooler. The corresponding noise to performance graph also looks much more interesting now. Now we can see how the temperature really scales whilst we reduce the fan speed slowly down towards 30%. What we can immediately see is that the Geometric Future Eskimo Junior 36, well that's a long name, is definitely better than for example a Liquid Freezer 2 360 ARGB, but it is still behind other contestants like the Silent Loop 2 360 or High Performance Galahad 2 series. And now let's get to the big boy category. Solely the best of the best are left in the game, and the Eskimo Junior managed to keep the CPU at 82.5 degrees C above ambient, just a tick behind the Silent Loop 2 360. The noise to performance graph, however, changed. Now the Eskimo Junior looks like it's on the last spot, but if you look closely, there is still a dot for the Liquid Freezer 360, because that one just survives at 100% RPM fan speed. As soon as you touch it, it's, it's out, hence it's a dot. But still, something not to forget here is that the Eskimo Junior Neon 36 managed to keep it up until 320 watts, something that not that many coolers can do at all. So performance-wise, it's up there with the very best, somewhere in between a Arctic Liquid Freezer 360 and a Be Quiet Silent Loop 2 360. Not, not bad at all. It's not necessarily like a huge surprise, but it's among the best. And although I'm not done refilling the whole list, I am doing it in a performance order, so there will be more than enough 360s coming, which probably won't make it until the 320 watts list. So it's already an accomplishment. 
Let's now talk a bit about the AIO itself. The Eskimo Junior Neon 36 comes inside a relatively standard AIO packaging. Inside we got the AIO itself with three fans, installation hardware for AMD and Intel, some thermal paste, the adapter to get the RGB on the fans going, an ARGB controller in case your motherboard can do it, and a 1 to 2 PVM and ARGB splitter. Why 1 to 2? If we got three fans, because all the fans have an included ARGB and PVM splitter attached to each other so that you can daisy chain one to the other and then just use the splitter to connect the pump to everything and control everything via a single PVM or a single ARGB connector. I still wouldn't recommend combining the PVM of the pump and the fans, that's, that's not the best idea. I would always recommend to keep the pump at 100 on a separate uh, header, but you could do it. The fans used on here are Geometric Futures own Squama 2505 ARGB fans. These spin at up to 2000 RPM while it's pushing 4.28 mm of H2O at up to 91.3 CFM. And of course, they are shining in every imaginable color. But the eye candy for me is the water block pump combo. A, this thing is ridiculously big, and, and I mean it is, it is huge. But it also has a tiny ARGB line going all around it and it has a geotext slash logo in the center which is also shining through. As far as aesthetics go, I, I like this. It's not too much RGB, it's the thin lines make it look modest and the mixture of reflective black and silver, I think it looks nice. Oh, on the radiator we also got some accents. On both sides we will find an extremely thin Geometric Future name with the logo in yellow, which also looks kinda nice. Other than that, the tubes are about 450mm long, they are nicely braided and adjustable at the water block, and just as a whole it, it does feel high quality. Nothing is wiggling too much, everything feels relatively sturdy and like high quality materials have been used. Even the copper plate is relatively big, almost 55 mm square with the edges rounded off, which is okay for CPU sizes nowadays. For the radiator, it's surprisingly dense. It got 12 water channels and I've counted about 19 to 20 FPI, so as far as AIOs go, it's relatively dense. But now let's get to a thing that I can't really wrap my head around. There is no manual. There wasn't one in the box. And if you go on their website, you will be forwarded to get to their resource center where you will find a PDF under DM, whatever the heck this is. And that's just kind of a copy of the product website, but in a completely broken PDF file that makes my 12900K stutter for some reason. And if you look on the manual, just that's just flat out no. What you can do is go to the regular non-neon version of the cooler and look at at that one because it's basically the same area with a different set of fans but while we're at it you can install this thing on basically everything under the sun from LGA17 all the way back to 1150s as well as 2011, 2011-3 and 2066 and on Team Red it's AM5, 4, 3 uh, and even TR4 which okay. To install it on Intel we need to position the backplate and screw it down with the double end standoff screws. From there we need to add the Intel mounting brackets to the block by clicking them in. Over on AMD we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets, screw in the standoff screws for AMD and clip the AMD brackets onto the block. And now slap that big boy onto your CPU and screw it down using the thumb screws. Now even if the manual is meant for the Eskimo Junior 36 non-neon, it is crap, it is a load of crap. It looks nice, it's well designed and all. But it, it's a, it's way too short. This is essentially the only image that you will get that explains what to do. But this is an Intel board. And yes, it says in the bottom that AMD doesn't need the backplate part but people will get confused and, and you will lose half of the new AMD builders and I mean people that have never built AMD because they won't be able to figure out how to rip off the AMD backplate even if you do not need to rip it off at all. It's 
this is not a good idea. They were never supposed to do it in the first place, but as soon as they will see this image, some of them, not all, but they will get confused and their brain will go into neutral and they will do all sorts of weird stuff. Never underestimate the possible outcomes for people or for somebody who isn't building PCs for a living. You would be surprised of what they are capable of. But the pinnacle of, of the crap here is, is this. I understand that Cooler Master didn't give a damn when they advertised their NR200 with a red in the bottom. But this is a manual for an AIO. And this is a no-no. This will work for some time and then it will stop working. And then you are going to have an awesome time with weird noises and, you know, high temperatures and your PC will go it's no. This is bad. This means the pump will do after a few years. It's, it's, this is incredible. But if we are already focused on the small things, let's just finish them. Equipped with special make Squama 2505 series bucket fans. What, what the hell is a bucket fan? Excellent cooling performance and low noises. It's, it's low noise. Low noises would be low noise from different noise sources like fish, a fish, two fish, but two fishes. Outstanding texture. Yeah, touch it and then you gotta clean it. And what is a Progoda shaped connector? Pro, Progoda? Progoda shaped connector. Out of 10, I would give Geometric Future like a solid 3 RG poops for the random words they, they use on the presentation website. Not quite 4 because it is elegant, as you can see. No, jokes aside, it's a good AIO. Design-wise, it's up to you, but performance-wise, it's up there with the really good ones. It kind of beats the Liquid Freezer 2 360 ARGB, which is impressive. It's not quite the Galahad 2 though, but compared to entry-level stuff, it's really, really fine. Just make a proper manual, please, and include it in the box. Cases, there you can skip on the manual part and print a QR code on the box, or you could even do it with AIOs, but you need a, a manual. Write a freaking manual and don't make people kill their new product. For the price, it's a bit more on the expensive side. I can get it for around 150 euros, which isn't that much compared to things from NZXT, Asus or Lian Li, but it's still 40 bucks more than a Liquid Freezer, so you decide. But for today, I think this should be all for Geometric Future and their Eskimo Junior Neon 36. This is still a long name. At this point, a huge thank you to them for sending it over. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel memberships, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to help Geometric Future with writing a proper manual, because this is obviously a no-no. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Lee and Lee Galahad 2 Trinity performance, because that thing might, might cost you a liver, but it will keep a 320 watts workload cool. Just cool. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.